Trump Council for Justice for the crime that has committed 26 years ago. We must ensure that courageous survivors of the disaster find the access to clean water, adequate health care, and economic rehabilitation after all these years. We must pressure our government to help bring justice to the survivors by forcing Dow Council to appear in court. Until this happens, our own lives remain in danger. Justice for Mobile, justice for all. Thank <laughs> you. 
here today to tell the story of Bhopal. Bhopal is a city in central India known for its beautiful landscapes, ancient mosques and commonly called the city of lakes. In the late 1960s an American chemical corporation Union Carbide obtained permission to build a chemical plant in the city close to the densely populated slum areas. In the late 1970s it became clear that the plant was not built up to existing standards and many red flags were raised. However, no improvements were made despite the reports lying on the table of American managers. On the night of December 2nd, 1984, a terrible disaster happened. 40 tons of lethal gas, methyl isocyanate, leaked out of the plants into the surrounding areas, killing over 8,000 people and injuring half a million more. Union Carbides eventually settled with the Indian government for a paltry sum of $500 per person injured by the gas and $2,000 per life lost. Is this the value of human life? And this travesty of justice continues until today as the current owner of Union Carbide, Dow Chemicals, is denying any liability to the disaster despite the fact that civil and criminal cases are still ongoing and it refuses to appear in the court to face justice. Meanwhile, hundreds of thousands of people are still suffering from a variety of diseases related to gas exposure, and 16 communities are forced to drink water heavily contaminated with the chemical waste from the factory site that still remains on its original location. But the courageous survivors have overcome adversity and taken matters into their own hands. They created a clinic that, with no funding from either governments or corporations, relying only on private donations, is able to provide high-quality medical care to those suffering of exposure-related diseases. The Samhavana Clinic is a symbol of the triumph of the human spirit over corporate greed and government callousness. The survivors have also repeatedly marched to Delhi to make their voices heard, and as a result of the continued pressure, several of the communities in the water-affected areas are finally getting clean drinking water through a dedicated water pipeline. Yet, so much more, so much more remains to be done. We are here today to show our solidarity with the Bhopalis and their struggle. We must not forget what happened in Bhopal 26 years ago. We must not let rogue corporations get away with criminal negligence leading to mass homicide. We must not let the deaths of the 25,000 people be in vain. We must learn the lesson that no corporation, no matter how powerful, can be above the law. We must bring Dow Chemical to justice for the crimes it has committed 26 years ago. We must ensure that the courageous survivors of the disaster finally get access to clean water, adequate health care, and economic rehabilitation after all these years. We must pressure our government to help bring justice to the survivors by forcing Dow Chemical to appear in court. Until this happens, our own lives remain in danger. Justice for Bhopal is justice for all. All right. Uh, share our thoughts. Uh, 
about uh, what happened about uh, you know how it's uh, connected uh, to our daily lives and so on. Maybe maybe I'll, I'll start. Um, so, 26 years ago, <clears throat> over 500,000 people got exposed to this really toxic gas, and unfortunately, until today, uh, no adequate uh, compensation has been paid to the survivors. No uh, adequate health care has been provided. All the hospitals that were built ended up being used uh, for high cost uh, heart surgery rather than uh, the free treatment of the survivors who often cannot afford any medication or any uh, hospital stay. And unfortunately, a lot of the people in the area are still forced to drink contaminated water until today. And how does that affect all of us? Well, the way it affects all of us is that we are, we, we, we live in a world where uh, corporations have all the power. We live in a world where corporations get to basically decide what happens. And if we let something like this go unpunished, even though it has been 26 years, uh, we can't give up the fight. If we give up the fight, then the corporations win and everybody loses. Everybody loses, not, be, not because mm, we have been affected directly, but because everybody uh, suffers from the consequences of such an injustice. And injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. And that's, that's the basic principle. And that's why we're all here today. That's why we're showing our solidarity with the people of Bhopal, showing our solidarity with our struggle. And, um, showing our support. Uh, I'll, I'll. And thank you all for coming. So let's just go around and say a few words. Uh, so the case of Bhopal is actually uh, um, is sort of an exemplary case in the sense that it, it tells us a lot about how the poorest of the poor in our society are actually treated and how uh, what are our relations with them. So for instance, one parallel that I could draw that I was thinking of today was um, this water leak that happened a few months back in Boston, one of the uh, one of the pipelines for drinking water actually leaked, and uh, there was apparently some uh, some uh, contamination in water. And the way the city administration here responded to the situation, the way people were alerted of the ill effects of the contamination, the way emergency processes were set up to ensure that people could drink water, I mean, proper water, and not fall sick, and all of that. And this was only for, uh, uh, for I mean, a, a, a one-day thing. Like people were, uh, the, the leak remained for only one day, and things were fixed, and so on. And all the newspapers were flooded with articles, and everyone was, uh, you know, talking about it, and so on. Right? When you compare that to what, ha what has happened in Bhopal, people in Bhopal have been drinking poison for the last 26 years, and nothing has been done. Like I mean, as Leon was saying, 16 communities are still now forced to drink contaminated water. And it's it's not the fact. The fact is not that the Indian government or Dow Chemicals lacks the resources to ensure safe drinking water to to, to a community like that of Bhopal, right? I mean, we have enough resources, but why is it the fact that people have had to fight for 26 years and God knows for how many years to come to just ensure proper drinking water for their children? And the fact that uh, even getting drinking water is such a huge struggle. Forget about. Forget about the chemical, the, the, the ill effects of the chemicals, the medical relief and all of that. The fact that water is such a huge deal tells us a lot of you know how we look at uh, the marginalized in our society. Um, I want to add to the fact that um, I think it's amazing uh, how this, like all of us are here braving the cold and whatnot. So thank you for people who haven't been involved in this before. It means a lot to each one of us and especially to the people. But hopefully this stuff is going to get printed in uh, the Globe and things like that. So you should be proud of the fact that you know you are actually here and supporting the cause. So I think that that's amazing. And Bhopal is about a people's movement. It's not about two individuals. It's not about three activists. It's not about five survivors. It's 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 a concept where we want to live in a world which is not dictated by corporate greed, which is dictated by the value of human life. And I think that. We need to, we really need to respect that. And by being here, we're putting one step forward in that direction. I want to also say that, uh, you know, Bhopal is also an example of what happens as an extreme case when you do not respect your environment. And essentially, the pesticide manufacturing company is producing all these harmful chemicals. And it's now leached into the groundwater and it's like affecting a lot of people around that area. So when we do not care for the for our environment, Bhopal is the extreme, extreme example. And that's why we all live in a little Bhopal in some sense or the other is because you know every day we are consuming all these pesticides, the preparation. So in, if we, we 
dismiss the fact that as long as 3D and big companies keep on doing the stuff that they did in Europa, strike our effort for justice and keep on doing it. I just want to mention that I'm a proud member of Boston and Football. And I thank you all for being here. And hopefully this is a small step towards the final goal that is justice for all the people in football. It is being what you want for them and hopefully making sure that you know, what happened to the people of football does not happen to anybody anywhere on the globe. My favorite class this semester has been about protest movements in the 1960s. 42 years ago, I was expelled from Harvard protesting against Dow Chemical for its role in Vietnam War. And it makes me curious that 42 years later, Dow still has blood on its hands. Justice still has not been done. People who died from the diseases that they. Uh, um, sorry. <laughs> diseases that they contracted as a result of the exposure. And uh, all the children who are born with birth defects until today, uh, all the people who are suffering uh, from various diseases from the contaminated water, and just everybody who has you know, courageously struggled for the past 26 years to bring justice.
justice! When do we want it? No! no.
justice for Bopa. It's justice for all. Up with justice. Down with Dow. Up with justice. Down with Dow. We are living. Bopa. We are living. Bopa. We are living. Bopa. Dow, Dow, it is time. You must pay for your big crime. Dow, Dow, it is time. You must pay for your big crime. What do we want? Justice. When do we want? Okay, just straight up your school. Wow.
Meanwhile, hundreds of thousands of people are still suffering from a variety of diseases related to gas exposure. And 16 communities are forced to drink heavily contaminated water due to the chemical waste from the factory site that still remains of its original location. But the courageous survivors have overcome adversity and taken matters into their own hands. They created a clinic that, with no funding from either governments or corporations, relying only on private donations, is able to provide high-quality medical care to those suffering with exposure-related diseases. The Sambhavna Clinic is a symbol of the triumph of the human spirits over corporate greed and government callousness. The survivors have also repeatedly marched to Delhi to make their voices heard, and as a result of the continued pressure, several of the communities in the water affected areas are finally getting clean drinking water through a dedicated water pipeline. Yet so much more, so much more remains to be done. We are here today to show our solidarity with the people of Bhopal and with their struggle. We must not forget what happened in Bhopal. We must not let rogue corporations get away with criminal negligence leading to mass homicide. We must not let the deaths of the 25,000 people be in vain. We must learn the lesson that no corporation, no matter how powerful, can be above the law. We must bring Dow Chemical to justice for the crimes it has committed 26 years ago. We must ensure that the courageous survivors of the disaster finally get access to clean water, adequate health care, and economic rehabilitation after all these years. We must pressure our government to help bring justice to the survivors by forcing Dow Chemical to appear in court. Until this happens, our own lives remain in danger. Justice for Bhopal is justice for all. Okay, um, the gun can rise now. Guys, look the side for a moment.
Everybody has a candle, so we're just going to go around and, and uh, share share some thoughts that you know are related to the 26th anniversary, how it affects uh, the people there, uh, the people here, uh, and you know why we're doing this. Why we're here. So, uh, Shikan, do you want to start? Yeah. So today was, uh, it was it was one of the best rallies that I have done as part of you know this group. And although I'm losing my voice, but uh, it's totally worth it. We did four different universities, and I think one of the so this this reaches out to the to our goal of actually broadening the scope of the campaign to make people believe to the fact that this is not just about Nepal. It's about it's about this world. It's about how we want to shape this world. It's about not falling into corporate greed, not thinking about profit before human lives. And what we want to do is we want to involve these universities. We want to make a change which is more permanent and not just we come out here and we and we shout slogan. It's not just about that. So I want to thank all of you and whoever is involved in this campaign for however many years that it, it's been an amazing time that I've had and I think uh, I think we've got really great things to come and hopefully we we'll get uh, to what we what we what we what the people from Bhopal really deserve hopefully sometime soon. Uh, I think the Bhopal disaster it of course brings out a lot of uh, things of uh, things that we can learn from as as part of the solidarity movement. So, but one of the things I wanted to point out was that it also brings out inequity and injustice that is inherent in our society as the, as, uh, in, in the current world. Since that, I mean the fact that you know, I mean, this entire community has had to struggle for as long as 26 years for certain rare necessities of life, like clean drinking water, as basic as that. We're not demanding, you know, we're not demanding five star food or anything, we're demanding clean drinking water. Yeah, getting that has been so hard for 26 years. And when you contrast that, let's say what happened here a few, in Boston a few months back, there was a leakage in the water supply, and we have to build an alternate water supply line. And if you compare the amount of municipal involvement, the amount of media involvement, the amount of community involvement in ensuring that people don't fall sick, or in ensuring that the uh, so-called disaster is taken care of within 24 hours time, Contrast that with what, what the Gopal people have been going through for the six years. And they've been drinking poison literally, right? And so it, it does bring out the contrast in the way people are treated. And we have to be as part of this society, the privileged society, have to take cognizance of that fact and have to actually question ourselves where does our you know well-being, where does it come from? You know, at, at which people's cost. It's at people like this, it's at this kind of cost that you know we are we are uh, so it's important. I'm really glad that all of us have come out today. We are talking about it. This is my first campaign. This is my first rally. And I don't think it's much of a matter of pride. You know, because it's been, it's been 26 years and I certainly hope we don't have to come for the 27th year. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think it's a lot to expect given the uh, gross negligence of Dow Chemicals and uh, the, the injustice that's been meted out to all these people. Uh, having to drink uh, contaminated water for 26 years with thousands of people still suffering uh, and generations still to come. We don't know what the effects going further will be. Uh, but we certainly can hope that justice is meted out uh, and at the very least the site is cleaned up. Uh, we have to ask the larger question, how is uh, Dow Chemical still allowed to operate in India uh, under all these conditions and who's allowing them to operate? Uh, so that definitely raises a lot of questions about uh, what priorities uh, our governments have and uh, why profits are held above human life. Uh, but I certainly am hopeful uh, and that's why I'm here uh, and I appreciate all the solidarity that the people are lending. We are here, we are standing in America. The American Constitution embodies, at least in spirit, a certain idea that all human beings are created equal. It's not a very complicated idea. 
The point is, what do we have in practice? As opposed to what we have in books. And this is, and that's where Bhopal comes in. Corporate negligence, corporate criminality is one thing. And we know about that. And people have fought long and fought hard. People are fighting in this country as in everywhere else. Because it pertains to our collective future, right? We're all in it together. But there's also another question that somebody alluded to with the Boston City water leak, right? These are also people who if you pinch by a pin, the same amount of blood comes up, right? Who if you tell a joke, the same muscles help them smile, right? So if that's the case, what do 25,000 dead lives deserve or want right now from us, the fortunate living? It's a question we might ask ourselves. It's a question we might ask ourselves when we get irate at the BP oil spill and the response that evokes. The question we might ask ourselves when the country where Bhopal is goes into an orgy of spending and touts itself to have joined the big league. These are questions to be asked because a future of equity, a future of justice is a future where humans treat other humans as humans. Um, so I wanted to share a personal reflection uh, about part of the action that we're doing today, and that is the task. So it's now been actually 26 hours that I've been, um, you know, without food. And for me, obviously, it, you know, entails a certain amount of, uh, you know, whatever physical discomfort. But if you think about it, the survivors of the Kobal disaster have been suffering for 26 years, right? This is, so it's, it's absolutely incomparable. We're so much more fortunate than they are. And it's such a small gesture, it's such a small symbol that we're doing today by coming out compared to what they have suffered through, what they have lived through for the past 26 years. And also, you know, I was uh, talking about, uh, about uh, Tata earlier when he asked me whether it's a dry fast or, a, you know, or if I, if I got to drink water. He said, well, of course I got to drink water. And then I realized that, you know, like I can go to any of these university campuses and I can just get clean drinking water from, you know, any fountain. I can get it from the tap. It just, I, it's something that I totally take for granted and I don't have to worry about it. I know that no matter where I go in the city, I will find some clean drinking water for free. And that is not at all the case for the people living in Bhopal, right? They cannot go anywhere to find clean drinking water. They're stuck with this contaminated water that has about 400 times the allowed norm for you know, carbon tetrachloride and uh, I don't remember how many more times uh, the allowed norm of mercury and you know, other very poisonous substances. But they have no choice. They have to drink this kind of water every day. And so we're so much more fortunate than they are. And that is why it's so important that coming out here today, <laughs> Raising uh, our voices uh, is in solidarity with them, and we're uh, showing our solidarity by being here and by making sure that whatever the plight that they're going through is that it's not it's not forgotten, not not because 26 years have passed, not as 50 years passed. It cannot it cannot be forgotten until we get justice. Okay. Well. As I was preparing to come to this, um, to this event this afternoon, I was talking with one of my co-workers. And um, <laughs> the reason we were talking is because we have another event that is happening as we speak. In about 15 minutes starts another event in Boston, where people from um, all over the world actually are claiming in front of a, or actually demanding, in front of one of the elected officials of the United States, uh, some justice for one particular cause, which is the cause of the students who are here, who are not here, when they are very young, and now they find themselves in in the position of not, the, of not being even able to sometimes even clean the universities we visited today on this on this event. And, um, 
and I, we were talking about the fact that I couldn't go to two events at the same time, so uh, I had to choose and I chose to come here. And, and because I could not be, could not not be here. That was, for me, is not a choice. Because, um, as you may know, Colo in Colombia we are facing the same situations and we have been facing the situation of mining big companies, uh, exploiting our resources, uh, the land being contaminated, the people being moved away, uh, displaced, and we have been facing it for a long time. And I think the cause of Bhopal, I think 26 years in Bhopal, or 30 years in Colombia, or 60 years in Chile, or uh, 15 years now in El Salvador, <laughs> We, we have to be here. We all have to be here because it's the same cause. No matter where you go, it's corporate greed what, what takes the land from people. So that's why I'm here. So I, I've been listening to all of your very eloquent descriptions of why you're here, and I so appreciate your presence here today, but also all the work that you put in, I know, on this issue. And I, I look at you and I think, you probably, I'm not sure many of you were even alive when this happened. You're young. <laughs> I was, I was about your age when this happened. And I remember the, just being horrified and, and angry and uh, disgusted by the, the corporate response or lack of response and the governmental neglect and just the, the inhumanity of the, the whole thing. And I thought, we, we've got to do something about it and we'll figure it out and we'll get something done two and a half decades later and it's still not taken care of and the same kind of thing or similar things have happened around the world almost on a daily basis and I it's a it's a generational issue for the people of Bhopal there are babies being born babies who are now adults who were born in this in this toxic environment and it's not right we can't for the people who live through it, never mind, but the people who are born since that time, we have to stop it, it has to stop. And we have to take the action to, to say no more, no more babies being born into this toxic environment. And we have the power to do it. It's not, it's not an act of nature, it's an act of human uh, decision making, and we can, we can stop it. So I'm glad to be here. Well, I was sorry to have missed all the eloquence, but I'm happy to have heard some of it. And uh, I uh, was fortunate enough to, to learn about this. I, I was alive at the time, but I don't remember it. I was, I was so pretty young, but um, uh, I want to thank the organization and uh, all of you all to have uh, helped me learn about this tragedy. and. And since the conference that you guys held over the summer, was of the summer, right? Uh, I've heard of another couple of chemical disasters. And uh, I'm quite sure that this long haul that people in Bhopal have been fighting is extremely important, uh, not only for them, but for people of other disasters in, in this. Uh, I'm thankful of uh, having learned about this from you all. And I'm very saddened by this. And, uh, and I think the importance of this is not just for Paul, but it's, it's in all places where people have been uh, served in justice, and, uh, and uh, I'm glad to hear the support you know, and this and the people of Paul. Uh, I'm sorry I missed the earlier part, so I'm not sure. I'm, I'm very sure that people would have covered a lot more about Bhopal. Uh, but I just want to take this opportunity to thank all the people who are standing here as activists. Because if we think about it, 100 years back, maybe, you know, if you're standing in a public place like this and holding a protest, maybe you would have been arrested. So there have been people who are activists who wanted to, you know, like, give this freedom of free speech. We are thankful to them. So right here, we are here, just a few of us here, who are actually talking about a bigger cause. Bhopal is not just constrained to a city in India. It's not just a struggle for the poor people in India alone. It's a global cause. It has multiple layers. It has the layer of environment. What goes wrong 
you, what went wrong in Bhopal is only an extreme example of what happens when all those harmful chemicals get into your body. But in everyday life, we are exposed to all the pollution, the pesticides, etc. So this is like, you know, a, a, an example that we are trying to say that we don't want to go in that path. So watch out. So even though it's only a few of us right here, it's working for the greater good of the entire humanity and I thank each one of you who have come here on this cold night and you are standing in solidarity for these people, for the survivors in Bhopal. Thank you so much. Well, I want to thank you all for inviting uh, me and the people who have attended uh, the conference held uh, this year. I was very um, privileged to be able to attend and learn a lot about what has happened 26 years ago in Bhopal. Um, I'm a, an activist and I support these efforts of, uh, of people like you and your organization. Um, especially because the, I totally agree with, uh, I'm sorry, your name, Brim. Um, the ecological disasters that is also all over the world. Uh, I had the privilege also to see it uh, in Kentucky um, this year and learn about what's happening in Colombia as well with um, coal mining and how water has been polluted and communities have been displaced. So I'm here to support and I'm very grateful that you all were able to come and um, thank you very much. Um, I guess a lot of people have said a lot of things. I don't have to say a whole lot. I just yeah, want to say thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, everyone, I think a lot of people have given that method to be here today and some of very cool night. So, you know, um, I, I'm just saying we're standing not just for Bhopal but for humanity. And I think that's the key point. And, and I think we should, everyone should strive to do whatever they can to uphold basic values for which we call ourselves human, that's all. Thank you everybody for you know, making me part of this. Thank you. Uh, just adding on to what he said, you know, we say injustice towards one is injustice towards all. I say injustice in one place is injustice in every, every part of the world. Uh, 26 years of Bhopal is 26 years of impunity, of 26 years of a big corporation having walked all over a certain amount of people. And uh, I really don't think that we should have a 27th year. So this is an occasion to commemorate. This is also an occasion to basically take a resolve that we push so hard that there should not be a 27th year. And um, this has been a day-long event. Uh, some of us here have been in different places and have been pushing for this. So hats off to all of them. And also thank you for everybody for turning up and you know, making this a memory location. And, Making us, giving us a space to express our opinions and views and also for taking up a resolve so that we keep the fight going and end this misfortune which, which befell the Bopalis 26 years ago. Thank you. And uh, we could not, um, you know, uh, make it through and also to commemorate this extreme and extraordinary courage of all those who have made it and who are still struggling now, 20 years later.
long day. Yeah. Not let's have that. <laughs> Been doing this since uh, eight in the morning, pretty much. So uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for the people who have been from me, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, okay. Everybody has uh, a sheet of, uh, with slogans. Whoever doesn't, please. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Please, please uh, get one from Graham. Yeah. Let's 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 make a bigger circle. Okay. So. <laughs> you know, I can start. You can start. I think you and Sri can start. Go ahead. No, no, no. Oh, we'll have to go. <laughs> we all live in Bhopal! 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 What do we want? Justice! No voice love, but I'll do what I can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, it was so cold, the string broke. We, we, had, a, we had a broken <laughs> string earlier. We were playing so. at MIT this morning. Oh, no. uh, but can you sing? I'll, I'll fucking play it. Five strings instead of six. All right. <laughs> All right. I hope I still have uh, enough voice love. So this, this is a song that uh, Shrikant and I wrote for the 25th anniversary. Unfortunately, you know, uh, we're still here today, so. Uh, it uh, is still something that uh, continues. I mean, you know, the song is still as relevant today as it was last year, unfortunately. Um, and uh, despite the broken string and the hoarse voices, hopefully we'll be able to. Uh, and I'll just give you all the the part that repeats. The part that repeats is: We will love, we will live, and we will fight for what's right. We will lose and we will win, but we won't fade out of sight. Okay, so once again, uh, everybody, can, can you say it with me? We will love and we will live and we will fight for what's right. We will lose and we will win, but we won't fade out of sight. Okay, great.
ready? We will love, we will live, and we will fight for what's right. Me, let's try. guitar. Let's have a single sing guitar. We will lose, and we will win, win but we, we won't fail outside. We will love, we will live, and we will fight for what's right. We will lose and we will win, but we won't stay outside. Okay, and then the second one is... Uh, Tell me of the time you walked a thousand miles. And when they thought we're done, we just did it twice. Tell me of our children who were robbed their smiles. Broken, but our spirit still resides. Wealth and health and power aren't on our side, but those who did us wrong can run, not hide. Everybody, we will love, and we will live, and we will fight for what's right. We will lose, we will win, we will fight for what's right. We will love, we will live, and we will fight for what's right. We will lose. But we won't fail outside. And then the last one. I'll try to do the left guitar. Uh, the last one, the melody is a little different, so I'll do what I can. Mm -mm. How can the world not feel this pain of those who are gone and of those who remain? There's so much to do and so little time. Silence only shields this corporate crime. So hold our hands and hear our call. Justice for Bhopal is justice for us all. So hold our hands and hear our call. Justice for Bhopal is justice for us all. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Good job. Good job. Thank you for the difficult one. Next, a little.